it was a uh, it was a standing room only event Professor Gogi Wadiongo was there too. And by the way, he's my guest tomorrow night, so what a week we're having. It's the literary giants. My guest has written no less than six books. She's co-authored a play with Professor Gogi Wadiongo. She is the professor's professor in town as part of Riara University. That's right. She's a visiting professor there for a few weeks. So if you want to see her other than on the bench, go to Riara University. That's where she's going to be. It is a pleasure, a privilege to have her on the show today. She will shed light, her thoughts, her hopes, her vision for today's Kenya. Sit back. My Twitter handle is at Koinanga Jeff. The hashtag, as always, JKL. My guest, Professor Miss Sherry Mogo. Professor Emeritus. That's right. How do you spell <laughs> that? I don't know. <laughs> Professor Emeritus at Syracuse University. <laughs> Prof. Yes. Good to see you. Good to see you. Jim. Emeritus. Always, what always. a title. <laughs> Great <laughs> title. Good to see you. Welcome Thank back you to so Kenya. Much. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, I'm sure you're having fun at Riara. How is it? Good fun? Oh, absolutely. Yeah? Really, really. I am so happy I came. It's an, it's an amazing place. And yeah. I hope we can talk a little bit about it. Absolutely. absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll get back to Riara in a moment. But... Mm. Um, Look, you have a, um, a listening post, if you will. You, you, you look at Kenya from the outside looking in, and, you, and despite you, know, you teaching at uh, Syracuse all those years, you have been looking at your home country, at your homeland. Your thoughts about where we are today? Hmm. Well, I, I, I think, as you say, actually, you know, um, even though in terms of physical distance, um, I'm away from Kenya, my spirit is here, my heart is here. I feel extremely connected um, through a lot of friends, comrades, and uh, the work that is going on here. So that spiritual connection is real. Mm. And uh, for some reason, I, I've never quite called other places that I've been to, um, how shall I say, their home, because I'm there. And I've learned to create a home wherever I am, following my mother's advice. But home in Kenya is a special, special place. Yeah. It's really what uh, Professor Ogot would have called um, uh, in a title of a book that he, he wrote, a place to feel at home. Mm. The heart is connected. Yeah. The heart beats at rhythm. You hear rhythms of speech that you um, associate with. You don't have to begin explaining anything when you meet people. It's like you're converging from where you left off. Yeah. So in that sense, it's a joy to be home. And despite leaving into exile 33 years ago, 1982, I was in Form 4. So, you oh know, my. let's put in perspective here. Despite leaving 33 years ago, you still feel that connection. Chief, I did not know you were a child. I <laughs> <laughs> I have good melanin. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Time has not affected it. You know, um, th th that's, that's really true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you first left mm. in 1982, mm. did you ever think you would come back? Was there that feeling or did you leave saying, you know what? This is it. I'm gone. Mm. Frankly, those days, you could never be sure that one could ever come back. And um, so it was a very painful departure, uh, not one of choice. It wasn't voluntary. Uh, it was an, appro an approachment that was very abrupt and that was difficult. In fact, I left at a time when I was sick and with two little children, uh, five and six and a half. So that was painful and it really did look as if one might as well resign oneself to never coming back. But you know, I've always been a very hopeful person, really hopeful. And, and uh, those words of uh, former uh, president of, uh, uh, of the third president, first president of South Africa, that I will return, really were real. You know, there he was defying Robben Island and detention and so on. And, and in the same way, I was feeling, I will return. But to be honest, down inside, the doubting Thomas was there. Sure. How will you return? But um, that, that soul that refuses to give up, to surrender, and, and that commitment to home, 
and that sense of injustice, how dare anybody make me leave my home, was always there. And also the joy that a lot of people were not happy that you ever left and they want you to come back. And this is the joy of coming back. Warm, warm welcome. Lots of love. You really feel spoiled. And I think the people at Riera University, yeah. they know how to do it best. Is that right? Yes. And when you look at Kenya in yeah. 1982, mm. and you look at Kenya in, yes. in 2015, yes, yes. Have, yes. We, is, have we grown light years? Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad you came back on that one because it was the, the second part of your question to me, yes. and I never got to it. Yes. Uh, lakini unajua wazee wakumbuka hata <laughs> na mara wasahau but anyway really um it's a joy to be back and be able to talk and sometimes say very critical things even on your program mm -hmm. here yeah. knowing that the CAD are watching the police are watching mm -hmm. maybe who knows Everybody's even the president watching. could be watching. You, who never knows? Know? you never know if we are lucky <laughs> But the point is, yes. being back and being able to talk and not have to look back over your shoulder, feeling scared and nervous, and also seeing people talking to you normally, because very often they really would do the disappearing act if they saw you, because by association, they really didn't want Thank to be said together. But they would be whispering from behind, we are behind you, we are together. But which whispering. was nice, whispering. So we no longer whisper. We talk to people like you, journalists and newspapers and so on. Bishops and, and church people preach, you know, without feeling that. So that is joyful, just to see where freedom of expression has yeah. taken us. It's joyful to see, um, you know, even changes in terms of infrastructure, you know, the roads and so on. It's good to see hospitals and so on that had really gone to the dogs and, and, and so on uh, in terms of infrastructure about six or so years ago coming back and so on. So that is a joy to come back under a new constitution and to really see that on paper we have a lot of what we are looking for yeah. to make our dreams come true. That is a special joy. Prof, I'm glad you brought that up because many of our viewers are under 25, let's say, the young viewers, mm -hmm. they have known nothing but the millennia onwards, let's say. Mm -hmm. right? So 15 to 25. Mm -hmm. They don't know what it was like in mm -hmm. the 70s, mm -hmm. in the 80s, mm -hmm. in the 90s. Yeah. They have no clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yet the things you all went through so yeah. that we can enjoy yeah. these yeah. freedoms you speak about. It's amazing that the young people, uh, are rare, some of who were not born at the time, you know, I left, I guess, they, they, ha they have no idea of, of that history of repression and oppression or tyranny. They, they really don't. But the, the other part of answer to your question is also a lot of sadness when you watch a repeat of the same mistakes, the same old things. And I was saying to one of the uh, classes today at Riara University, uh, law students who are doing the constitution and constitutionalism, and a very able uh, uh, professor uh, there, um, uh, uh, Kebit, was trying to, to help them understand the difference between constitution and constitutionalism. The sad thing is, even with this beautiful constitution and so on, unless we make that constitution work, unless we push it beyond being a paper document, if we don't make constitutionalism uh, come and the rights that are in there, you know, um, reinforced, it's useless and I see so much of that repetition of you know uh, corruption which even these young people are terrified by you know economic injustice and parity it's really getting worse and it's shameful to see some people who are so poor and struggling you know such a great deal you know beautiful Kenyans and it looks as if from the time their children are born there is very little hope and yet the Constitution offers so much hope and so on so at one level we have really you know made it well issues on the gender for instance you know I, I think 
I'm sometimes amazed, you know, to listen to people talk and see how they are thinking, oh, why are we talking about women and gender and so on, you know, trying to pretend that that is no longer an issue. Issues of disability and so on. So I, a conversation really needs to continue very actively. And more than that, we really get, need to get into to those trenches and make things happen. So some of this is sad. A lot of it is good news, like seeing Riera University is such a joy. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Look, when you talk about the Constitution, Chapter 6 is the one that always comes up all the time. And we talk about ethics. Uh, and, and a lot of the young people, or rather, s some of our leaders, mm -hmm. are not what Chapter 6 was talking about. Let's right. face it. Right. But they get elected. Right. They're probably the most popular out there. Right. And, we, and, and the young people watching this right. keep saying, you know what, maybe I should steal. Yeah. Maybe I should yeah. be, I want to be like yeah. those people. Yeah. Because look yeah. at them. Yeah. We, we keep electing yeah. them. Yeah. Jeff, really, what you have said so eloquent in, uh, eloquently is, is, is tragic. Because you see, once a nation lets um, uh, um, issues like corruption become a part of its ethos, a part of, it, a part of its fabric, over many years, it becomes socialized into us, internalized, and sometimes we don't even realize it's happening, so that this looks like a way of life. And therefore, you know, it's no longer an issue that a leader is corrupt, that a leader is, is arrogant and, and, and accumulating wealth at the expense of, you know, his or her constituents and so on. You're right. Um, you know, it, and that's the other thing I was saying about the Constitution. Until Wanainchi hold it tightly and say, this is our document, and we are going to make especially Section 1, Section 4, that talks about the people and their right, and we, the people, become real. And really, we've got to do that. Uh, thinking that the dictatorship went and that therefore we finished the work that needed to be done is such an illusion because the basic things that are eating at the fabric of our society are still there, you know. The whole notion of um, education, you know, and, and what we are doing with our education and so on. A lot of good things have happened, a lot of work needs to be done. Um, devolution is a great idea, but when you know, the corruption of, at the national level gets transferred to the lesser unit and it's repeated there. It really becomes, you know, um, one continuing saga. Absolutely. It's yes. one step forward, mm -hmm. like four steps backwards. Mm -hmm. But there is hope. The, oh, absolutely. I want to talk about that hope after the break, Professor. But I also want to talk about um, your tenure at Syracuse and especially, the, you know, the, 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 the end of it uh, and, and, you know, Chief Justice being there, who's an old friend of yours, right? That you mention him, that's, yeah, that space that delights me and the work he has done Did you with think the when judiciary. you all were struggling back in the 80s, oh, you'd end up my, being Chief Justice? No. Nope. It was never... Believe me, yeah. that would never ever have come into my mind. Look at that. I'm so pleased. The miracle I think he's Kenya. a great CJ. Yeah? Yes. Good guy? Absolutely. He needs to come on the show. Absolutely. He'd better. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I told you this is the week of the literary giants, mm -hmm. starting with none other than Professor Michele Mogo. What a professor. What a brain. This is what we need. This is what we need to be told and retold and retold about this great country that we all need to be a part of. Jeff Koinange Live is what it's all about. We're going to take a break. Keep tweeting at Koinange Jeff, the hashtag. It's JKL, and JKL takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.